great. I think, well, we are at the uh, top of the hour. People are just uh, dripping in. Um, as always, this is a this is a very open show, so everyone is able to to join or leave whenever they want. Of course, um, first of all, uh, Marie, thank you so much for joining, and um, of course, well, um, for you dropping in when we were talking to Nico, or was it like a week and a half, uh, two weeks ago already? I think that was great. It was a nice surprise. Um, so, um, just for those of you who haven't visited any of these, well open forums before uh what we're going to do is um well marie and i are going to have a very friendly chat uh just talking about music uh food apparently as well which is always a great topic of mine as well um and after a while we'll just open it up uh for everyone to uh to join us on stage and ask any question they uh, might uh, they might like uh but as always uh, Let's make sure that we all uh, have, a, have a good fun time here. Um, if you have anything that you want to ask, but you are unable or unwilling to join us on stage, feel free to uh, post your questions in the companion channel. Uh, you can also use that to uh, to share any links, or if you want to point, at, point out something, uh, just use that there as well. Um, so again, Marie, I've already said it a couple of times, but thank you so much for joining. So how have you been today? How has how's been, how's been your day? Oh, it's been good. It snowed here. Um, it's nice and pretty outside. Been playing music. Um, it's been good. It's been very good. Great, great. And um, the snow is not not too cold, or is it just okayish? It's freezing. Oh. It's definitely. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So, um, what I'd like to uh, start off with is a bit about. Where did you come from, from a, from a musical upbringing point of view? What were big influences when you were growing up? Uh, from from uh, Did your parents listen to music a lot? Or uh, how did you develop your own tastes and your own well, style, so to say? Oh, you know, um, that's a really good question. So as a kid, uh, I wanted to play piano. So I guess I have more of like a classical kind of upbringing. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't say like I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not really super proficient with the piano. <laughs> I think that I wanted to play, I got this kind of like feeling that I wanted to play in fourth grade. So I asked my mom, I wanted the piano lessons and she said yes. And so I started those and I think I had heard music like Rhapsody in Blue and things like that. And I was interested in trying to play music um, like that. And being like in fourth grade, obviously you don't start out playing that, but uh, <laughs> eventually, you know, I, I got to the point where I was able to play some, some of it, not the whole thing. Um, and it's something that I want to go back to uh, the piano, but I haven't, even though I have keyboards and since I haven't really tried to really read music mm -hmm. uh, again. Um, but to kind of get back on track with like my parents, I don't know. I mean, my mom, I remember distinctly once going to a music store and my mom getting like a Neil Young CD. Um, we listened to a lot of Wings when I was a kid. But other than that, I can't really remember too much of like their my parents' musical tastes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wouldn't. I don't really think that their musical tastes influenced me too much. So I kind of had to develop my own mm -hmm. um, as I grew up. Yeah. So how how did that evolve? So when when you uh, start getting a bit older, what kind of music were you into? How did you then uh, discover your own, yeah, your own style and your own tastes. Oh, I was into terrible music as a, like a middle schooler and a teenager, like mm -hmm. a lot of the pop stuff. Um, <laughs> I really like that song by Tattoo. Like they were popular for about five seconds. If anybody remembers them. Oh, the the two uh, Russian girls, right? The uh, yeah. Um, oh, what's that song called again? It was like all the things. All the things she my... said, yeah. Wasn't it that? Yes. Now I need to. So this is why we have the companion channel, where we can always have someone just looking, looking that up. 
uh, all the things she said. Yeah, that's it. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it was it, it was terrible, but you know, for like seventh grade me, I was really into it. I, I... But that was that was actually not a bad song, I would say. That was not terrible. <laughs> no, but, yeah, I mean, it wasn't terrible. Um, I guess like in middle school, I felt like so embarrassed to express the type of music that I liked mm -hmm. that I feel like I didn't really develop a sense of musical taste for a while. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's just something to get like into. I don't know if you really want to get into that. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it was hard because I just felt like whatever I picked, people would, would judge me for it. I don't know. I think a lot of middle schoolers are like that. Yeah, when you start to develop your own your own identity, but still being at that age when you might be over, overly well, well, not sensitive wouldn't be the right word. Uh, well, at least concerned with oh, but what do my peers think, or how would they then, how would they 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 judge me if they knew this about me? So yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. And how did that? How did that then? Um, because apparently somewhere along the way, uh, you, you started making, making those changes. Could you, uh, how did that happen? How did you get the, well, the audacity or the, you might say the, well, the strength or the, or the courage to say, well, well, no, this is what I want. And this is how I then evolved. Um, you know what? I think it's just like through actually playing music, discovering what I like and mm -hmm. what I like to play. Um, and I think that when I got older, I had stopped playing the piano for a while um, mm -hmm. and then kind of discovered since my husband is, well, he was first very into guitars and then um, we started record collecting and listening to music a lot of like just every different everything. I mean, it, there was no one genre that we mm -hmm. didn't listen to. Um, so listening to music and, and he would play the guitar on occasion and I wasn't very interested in guitars at all. Um, but then we kind of wanted to start branching out into some different instrument territories. So um, we started listening to this artist called Mind, Mind Sign. Um, he was part of the LA beat scene and I can't remember what label he's on. It might be Stone's Throw. Um, but his music is, I thought that I wanted to make music like that. Um, it's not really like a lo-fi beat kind of thing, um, but it's, I, I don't know how you would describe it. It's really <laughs> chill. Um, and it really, it, it inspired me a lot to want to actually start to make music because I felt like I could approach making music like that electronically. Yeah. So I was interested and started starting to use maybe computer software or synths or something, didn't really know where to start. Um, and at that time we lived in an apartment, so we didn't have a lot of space. So my husband had kind of like a guitar corner. Um, and as he says it, he wanted to start making his guitars sound like synths. So oh, wow. we started, yeah, looking into synths and buying synths and playing synths and so he got all these pedals for his guitar um to process it so it would sound like a synth but eventually you know he got to the point where he actually wanted to buy a synth and i was really gung-ho about it <laughs> i was you know I think a lot of times, like the girlfriend in the music store, she'll kind of just sit there and do nothing <laughs> when we would go to the music stores and it would be like absolutely boring, so boring going and looking at guitars. I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. what it is, but guitars just don't excite me at all. Um, but the keyboards and the synths are like so super exciting. I'm I'm really into it probably because I played piano and yeah. I can act have like working knowledge of how I could possibly make it work. 
Now, I knew nothing about how to make sounds on these machines, <laughs> uh, but I knew how to play it. If I press a key, some sound will come out of it. Yeah. So I remember we went to a used music store and there was a micro Korg and I spent like three hours in the store just playing this thing. And I think that they were getting tired of me being there. Um, <laughs> so one of the guys at the front desk was like, hey, somebody just called and said that they want to buy that. So if you want it, you should buy it now. And I said, okay. <laughs> And you were so just I've, fangirling over the over the micro Korg, uh, as your husband was at, probably at that time uh, fangirling over uh, over the guitars in the same store. Or how did that uh, happen? Yeah, I mean, I think he he was playing the guitars, and then he's like, "Are you still playing that?" Okay. Like, <laughs> and I was just like mauling over. I'm like, yeah, I want to buy it. It's two hundred and fifty dollars. I I think I'll get it. And you know, I bought it and I played it. And then a few days later, for Valentine's Day, he got the machine software and the machine controller. Mm -hmm. And I just started to make music on that. And so, oh wow, yeah. But still, uh, also a micro cork for two hundred and fifty dollars. That's also a great deal, I would say. <laughs> it was a good deal, but you know what? It didn't have the microphone for the so not the, the vocoder. Oh wow! I'm oh, sorry to hear that. That's yeah. something that you, uh, you you you'd want. And 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 what uh, time frame are we talking about? How how long ago was this? This was. It must. It was probably two thousand and seventeen early mm -hmm. 2000 in like the winter time great yeah of course well, if you say well and then the next uh valentine's day he got you the machina uh yeah. software yeah. and controller of course yeah that that makes sense oh that's great and then and then and then what you brought the 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 micro cork home and you sat down with it what happened what how did that feel how did that um what did that evoke uh, creatively with you with your husband you the two of you working together for me it was really trying to figure out how it worked and mm -hmm. trying to use more than just the presets and i was just I, I i didn't i mean i didn't know how it worked i i turned knobs um i pressed buttons um i really wanted to I don't think that it has a sequencer on it, but I was really, really trying to make a sequence or figure out if you could play a sequence on it. And I'm closing my eyes right now, trying to remember if you can, but I, I don't actually think it has a sequencer on it, but I knew that I wanted that. I knew that I wanted to record a sequence somehow and play it back um, and then play something else on top. So it was definitely getting my feet wet Mm -hmm. with electronic music but it wasn't deep enough mm -hmm. so that was your entry your entry drug so to say that was your, your your gateway into synthesis and synthesizers in general yes yeah definitely oh. but i guess like a lot of people when they have one synth they don't just want one synth they're gonna have a million synths yeah, that's when the uh, that's when the, uh, the the gas starts, right? The the gear acquisition syndrome. Absolutely. I mean, feeling like, well, this isn't enough, so I have to move on to something else. Mm -hmm. And then we got um, sub thirty seven and a profit eight, and not. I don't know. Like, I feel silly saying this but just not having a grasp of synthesis at all when you have these things and just kind of struggling to figure it out or not really struggling but exploring and experimenting with it mm -hmm. and then ending up selling those things and like wishing that you had them back when you know how to use them because you would get so much more out of them um or I would get so much more out of them now than I than I did then, just because I know yeah. how to program, use them. So. So when when did that 
actual um, realization or or the understanding or that 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 um, awakening of the the actual insight into synthesis. How, when when did that happen and how was that triggered? Like how I mm, I don't know. I don't know if there was like a eureka moment for myself. It was like like gradually evolving and understanding more and more along the way. And and do, do you know which of the the uh, the synthesizers or which modules? I'm not sure if we're already in, into modular territory right now. Uh, which was the the most educational? You might say. Oh. Which of, oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> I'm like trying to remember back. Because at first I thought that modular since this, I can't, I can't say the word right for some reason. But at first I thought that it was extremely overpriced and it looked extremely complicated. And I just couldn't imagine how anybody could have fun playing that instrument. Um <laughs> Well, you were right about one thing. It's very expensive. <laughs> really expensive. Oh, what module? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I started with, I feel like something that was kind of overly complicated was having um, not the all black make noise shared system, but having the all the modules in the shared system and kind of starting with that. And that was like my first full system. Um, wow, and then that's, a, that's, a, that's a system to start with, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's really complicated. Yeah. I, I, would, I would not suggest anybody to start with something like that. Um, be, just because the, you know what, I don't know if I should say that, but the make noise language mm -hmm. it's so different i guess from everything else yeah out there it does make it kind of hard to transition onto other modules but having one singular system does make it a little easier because everything is supposed to go with each other i think that the hardest thing about the modular systems is finding the modules that you want to use that fit your sound, but you don't even know what your sound is yet. Yeah. 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 And how, so, and if, yeah. And if it, if you just go back just slightly before, so when you first said, okay, well, you always had this understanding of the modular world as being extremely expensive, extremely complicated. And at that point in time, not really fun. So how, how, how did that opinion about all that? Well, uh, that that prejudice towards modular, I might even say. How did that then uh, change over time, and and how long did that take you to get to that point where you said, okay, well, I I do want to take the plunge and and and, and buy the well the, the the shared system you put together yourself. Well, I my husband wanted to get the modular stuff, so mm -hmm. he sold a uh, Gary Holt custom shop guitar to start it off um, and get some some modular stuff yeah so it wasn't even really my choice <laughs> <laughs> it was bestowed upon you <laughs> yeah yeah and just kind of working through it and figuring it out it's almost like a puzzle so mm -hmm. it kept interest for sure and there's just endless possibilities to connecting all those different sounds together so yeah i mean i i didn't i was I was like, you know, okay, that's cool. If you get it, I, I you know, I would, I would use it. Mm -hmm. And but, that, but that, of course, that that then triggers a lot uh, going forward. If you, uh, if you look at your your current sets, the current uh, videos you put out uh, on modular. So that, the, how did that then evolve once you started to work with that, and how did the actual. Um, well, the, the loving embrace of modular. How did that uh, come together after, or well, playing around with the with the shared system first, and then evolving into your own system, where you did, um, as as you said, well, you, you wanted to design a sound, your own sound, which you didn't know what that was at that point in time. How did you go about that? So I think um, 
going through different modules, buying and selling ones that I, I didn't like or I didn't jive with, mm -hmm. um, and then figuring out what kind of music I wanted to make and what kind of sound I wanted to have um, definitely influenced my setup now. I'm completely happy with this setup that I have now. There's a few things that I would want to let go of um, and a few things that I would want, but for the most part... I don't have that like overwhelming need to get a mm -hmm. bunch of different stuff because I feel like I've been playing for long enough and I know it's almost like muscle memory at this point with the system that I have. <laughs> um, I know where everything is. I know what sounds everything makes. It's like finding a synth that works for you. I mean, Suzanne Siani, she has, you know, the Buchla system. It works for her. Yeah. Uh, she's known for that. Like, that's her sound. So I feel like I'm at that point now. Not, not, I don't feel like I'm like at her level of expertise in any way, shape, or form, but I feel like I know what I want out of my system. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't, I need to acquire more modules like i'm happy with where i am mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i can get yeah sorry get the sounds that i want from what i have perfect and then if we well if you i don't want you to uh <laughs> explain your whole uh, your whole uh, system to us uh but what would you say is the defining uh marina marie Anne hedonia uh module which is the module that is most um, in control or is defining for your sound? Or maybe mm -hmm. a, several, maybe a combination of modules that could have, that might even make more sense, actually. Like, if you were like, you can only use these modules. Mm -hmm. Would people still recognize it as being you? The sound, I think, I mean, the kick drum that I always use, I use, um, I combine it with a feedback module. Mm -hmm. So I, I, the, the BIA, which is a mm -hmm. lot of people use, but I combine it with another module to, to get it to be slightly, slightly different. Um, you know, the Marie's LFO, the, where oh, I can yeah. draw for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the the endorphins ground control is a sequencer um that i love because it has a keyboard um yeah. so for anybody like using a key step it's it's basically a key step that can go in your case um sound wise oscillator wise oh yeah. that's so hard <laughs> um you know i i love rings i think everybody loves rings um the performer module mm -hmm. i use that a lot um and then uh, chainsaw yes chainsaw oh wow yeah chainsaw and sync bucina i pair those together with a dope for filter um i don't remember the exact name because it's just a bunch of numbers but yeah. it's um kind of like a Oberheim filter. So Chainsaw Sync Bucina and that Oberheimish dope for filter are a combo that I use all the time. Um and I think I talk about it yeah. on on Instagram in my captions like at least once a week. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean that's definitely Oh, that's a great that's a great approach and I think that that's exactly where where I see people going towards where they have uh, just small combinations of, of, of modules where, where they say okay well this is actually going to be defining my sound and as you said the, the whole journey getting toward to that point is of course a, a matter of collecting and then uh, choosing and then evolving and then swapping things out going back there as well so do you have any any modules on your um, on, on your wish list currently? Uh, even though you just said, well, okay, well, I I know exactly where I am with my system, but do you have any 
anything that you'd say, okay, well, I, st I still need to investigate that, or this is one that I've got my eyes on? You know what? No, not right now. Um, just because I don't have a lot of space in my case. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to start desiring more things and then feeling like I have to get another case because mm -hmm. that to me is I don't have space for another case. And then if I get another case, then I will have to kind of rearrange everything and mess with the the balance of the modules that mm -hmm. I have now. Um, I think if in a perfect world, I wish that there were some more um, EQ modules. I have the scalpel module from WMD that I use for EQing. Um, there's the endorphins ground control module that I use occasionally for EQing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe more EQing compression modules so i can do more of that in the rack um and for instagram i don't i don't really mix things for instagram mm -hmm. but i kind of wish that i could just do that in the rack with an eq or a compression module so that's where i would want that's what i would want next um, to investigate more of those types of things Ooh, then you really have to look at um at uh, Mateus uh, Cosmotronic, he just released a nice compressor. I've, I've done a, I've done a review on that, and that 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 would be my recommendation for you as well. What's it called again? Ah, uh, let's see. What's it called? The Mezzo. That's that's the one. Let me just uh, I'll I'll just put it in the chat actually, so I'll make sure that I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put it there. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is, the Mezzer. That's a great one. There you go. Oh, well, that, that makes so much sense, of course, when you want to say, well, um, if you do want to keep limiting yourself by your case size, then you get, uh, you need to be more creative in the choices that you make, where you need to limit yourself on, okay, well, how do we, uh, how, how would you actually make sure that you approach that with that less is more approach where you want to minimize the uh, not just the, the, the number of modules, but making sure that you can still make sure that you make your your own sound uh, in yeah. the limitation that you imposed upon yourself, of course. Exactly, exactly. And I know that if I expanded, mm -hmm. my sound would probably grow and change and that would be that would be great, but I definitely think that there's a lot that I still need to explore with what I currently have and get creative with that. Mm -hmm. And in, in which directions do you think that you can still um, evolve in that regard with, with your current system? Is there any specific uh, soundscaping that you're looking into or specific genre uh, variations? Or in, in what regard do you want to oh, uh, keep exploring your system? You know, I've always wanted to do things that are more jazzy. I wouldn't say that I I could ever play jazz as an actual um, on an actual instrument, but I do like the sound of it. Um, mm -hmm. So I I want to kind of explore creating sounds like that on the modular system that I have. Um, more soundtrack sounds as well, so soundscapes very interested in creating things like that um just giving things space and having patience to kind of let things play out um instead of just wanting to stack things on top of each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that's a great that's a great plan for 2022 then of course yeah yeah just investigating those things and i mean i think that what i have I can definitely achieve those sounds with. It's just sitting down and really creating them and kind of figuring out the best workflow for things like that. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, of course, if you do get into more um, more variations from a genre perspective or a um, or an application specific approach, where you said, okay, well, if you want to do those soundscapes more like not like soundtracking or 
uh, cinematic uh, music and sound design uh, that will bring you into a completely different um, different part of what you can achieve with modular um, have you already worked on, on those kind of uh, projects where you uh, are, are doing things for videos or for uh, uh, or for movies so the one thing that I've done nothing officially yeah okay <laughs> but um kind of went down a youtube rabbit hole with my husband one day and we were watching these old wendy's um training videos and if anybody's ever seen them they're the great songs they sing about the drinks and the chili and then one <laughs> just to think a training video about theft in woolworth's and it was a video that was it seemingly very sinister. The narration was extremely, um, there was something really sinister about it. It was narrated by a guy who apparently was a shoplifter, but went to jail, but he didn't go to jail for shoplifting. So I don't know what he went to jail for, <laughs> um, but there was no music, no sound effects at all in the video. Um, so I sat down and created a soundtrack for that 18 minute video um so that was that was really the only thing i've done sitting down with a video and creating a soundtrack for it but i'd be really interested in doing more of that obviously mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um with other movies or videos yeah and i think that that is something where i do see uh more modular artists uh, gravitating towards as well uh, we had oh, i forgot his name real quickly let me just um the the guy who designed the um uh the crucible with uh, with sacrament mod uh, modular what's his name again nero was it nero yeah i think so so he's doing that as well, and um, yeah, he's he's using his modular system for for movie soundtracks there too. Nero Bellum, thanks so much, Graham. Um, that's it. That's his name indeed, or at least his his, his artist name. Um, is that something where you see that the the approach within synthesis, or maybe even modular, um, is that ingrained within the way that music is being made? Do you see that as a as a natural evolution for uh, for for modular synthesists, that they gravitate to more towards more the soundscaping uh, soundtrack, the more storytelling uh, approaches to uh, uh, to music production. I'm understanding your question right. I no, I don't think that the soundscape is mm -hmm. the natural progression. I think that a lot of people who play the modular. Uh, stuff kind of feel like that like it's more of soundtrack or soundscape or ambient music mm -hmm. but i i think the natural evolution of it for an artist is whatever mm -hmm. whatever they want to play um yeah, I, I thought that i wanted to make ambient music but it just didn't i just didn't go there <laughs> um it didn't come easily to me i thought that would i thought when i looked at other people playing the modular synth and when i thought about playing it i thought well that's what you're supposed to make with that you're supposed to make ambient soundscapes with this mm -hmm. um that just didn't jive for me i guess because i'm so impatient i always want to be doing something so i always want to be adding something or playing something or changing something um so the ambient thing didn't really work out for me um so i don't know i i think when i was starting out i definitely thought everybody was was supposed to play music with it but yeah i don't know i mean that's a good question yeah it's something i'm, I'm just thinking about because um well just like where you said okay well you, well, you where you said okay well, i want to make um i was expecting that i would end up making ambient uh, but then it didn't well, it didn't resonate with you or uh, for whatever reason I've, I've had a similar um you might say uh 
epiphany of sorts where I in initially said, okay, well, I want to do more of the black metal kind of ambient and mm -hmm. I apparently want to make much more up tempo things. So I've I've shifted away from 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 that black ambient into more electro punk as well, which I didn't expect at first. So I'm just thinking about how that evolution works. So how does on the one hand the the modular system how that then well will be a reflection of your own plans, but also how the the synth itself will evoke these sort of evolving uh, music production well uh, ambitions within uh, one as well so i think that that's a a bit of a uh, uh, of a combination of things where you do see that symbiosis and the synergy between artist and uh instruments really uh having a much more evolving approach than with other um uh, instruments i would say uh, but that, that's just my thinking out loud <laughs> we're already taking up way too much of your time more of course um so well, maybe you, mm -hmm. before you say anything else um yeah. i think with the modular synth it's more of something that holds your hand and works with you mm -hmm. um it kind of demands teamwork it it's not like a, um a keyboard synth where you're really in control of everything I feel like there's a lot of things that the modular synth can do on its own that kind of lead you or guide you down a different path than what you set off to do. Mm -hmm. I think so as well. I think that that's a, that's a, that's a great point actually, where you say, okay, well, it's, it's again, it's all about that journey. Right. And I think that this is a, that, that it's more of a companion than a tool. Yes. Oh, that's perfect. So we we do get so we started off talking about food, and now we're getting quite uh, philosophical about music. So that's great. That's that's what I like. Um, so I had a a bunch of questions, more questions for you, uh, but in, in just in the interest of time, I still have my two standard questions ready for you. So um, the first being, if you were to be able to give uh, your past self when you were in that um, used music uh, and, and instrument store, um, just about to purchase that micro cork. Um, if you were to give that person one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, dang. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I would say it's a really tough one. I, I do apologize for that. <laughs> Any of the, the things that you've learned about synthesis or synthesizers? Yeah. I mean, I guess it, I would say don't expect this to do everything or it doesn't have a sequencer. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very factual. And that, that, that that's also a great piece of advice, of course. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I'm one of those people that's like, if you mess with the past, then the whole future will change. So what 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 would you OK, then then my follow up question to that is, if you are of that um, conviction, and I, 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 I'm a, I'm an astrophysicist by trade, so I, I do understand where you're coming from. Um, but what would be the, what kind of an impact would that then have on you if you would have known that uh, from that point on, where you said, okay, well, I know that this is, this is not going to be everything. This is not going to be your, 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 your end all synthesizer. How, how would that have influenced you, especially during those first weeks or months? Uh, the, I might not have gotten it because I got, it took me so long. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy. I was, I went into it completely like naive mm -hmm. because if I knew too much, I think I would have hesitated and hesitation is never good. Yeah. 
for new things. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you need to just dive right in uh, two feet forward and just uh, see you know, how far the rabbit hole goes, right? Yeah. Hey, maybe my future self was the person that called on the phone and said, uh, somebody else is going to come pick this up, so you better buy it. Ooh, well, that's a that's a good one. Would you are, are you that devious that you would be able to think of how would I be capable of um, ensuring myself acting through on this so many years uh, before? Are you that devious that you could would have thought about that that approach? I don't know. Maybe my future self will have to at mm. some point. Interesting, interesting. So again, we have a philosophical conundrum here. So how do we how do we solve that? How we would be able to uh, to determine that? That's a good one. Um, but before I uh, want to uh, hand it over to the rest of the audience, I have made your life quite quite tough with all of my questions. So I um, I want to uh, give you one in return as well. If you have any questions for me that you want me to uh, to answer here on there as well. Hmm. I would say, and I think I remember this from the conversation with Nico, but mm -hmm. I know, I remember how you got started, but I want to know what is your least favorite your rack module? I'm not saying a terrible module, mm. terribly. What did, just didn't work for you? Let me see. So I have been... Let me just stand up here and just have a quick look. So what I have in my... Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think that I got a... Um, which one was that? Let me just think real quickly. Would it be that one? No, I don't think so, right? So, hmm. Great question, by the way, Marie. Absolutely. So I would say it's, yeah, would that actually be? So on, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I, I think I, I know what I would, uh, what I would say. So it's probably Platts. Oh, Act really? Yeah. And it's not, not that it's, because I think it's a great module and it is, um, it's a great thing. It's, it's, it's extremely versatile. And it's, well, of course, uh, everyone has plats. Everyone loves plats. But I, and I, and, and, and to a point, the whole idea behind it, I love that thing as well. But it does, it, it, it just doesn't seem to jive with me. I, I've been trying to incorporate it, but it's, I haven't been able to really bring it, bring all of its value, all of its richness uh or do it justice perhaps so that might it, it's it, it's probably going to tell you more about me than i'm actually about the module itself but um that's been yeah that's something that I, I i still want to make sure that i get more out of but i haven't been as um productive with as i expected beforehand but it's still yeah. in my rack and i i might say in in a few months okay well i need to uh come back to this and it's finally uh started well it's finally jove with me what's the what's the past tense of jive oh uh, jives jiving it's driving with me now i no uh, it's jove probably yeah it could be yeah well could be no, but that that's probably. I know it's a it's it's a hot take. I know that, but uh, probably that would be my answer. Yeah, great question. Thank you so much, Marie. You know what's funny is that when I first got plats, mm -hmm. I really didn't. I really didn't. I didn't like it. Um, it took me a while to like it, so I don't know. Uh, it might still. Uh, it might still grow on me. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Um, so um, what I would like then like to do is I just want to make sure that everyone who is uh, listening live right now has an opportunity to uh, raise their hands virtually and I will then uh, invite them up on the stage so they can uh, ask their questions uh, and I'm just going to take a, uh, a wild guess and, that, and that's going to be that all of the questions are going to be for you. So um, hope you're ready for this, uh, Marie. 
<laughs> I am ready. Perfect, perfect. So I would say go ahead. So we have maybe one in the perfect. So any any questions? Uh, either post them in the companion channel or just uh, raise your hand, and I'll get you up on stage. I do see that sound unit has raised uh, their hands. There you go. So sound units, welcome on stage. How are you? Hello. Good. How are you? I'm doing Hello, well. Marie. Doing well. So go ahead, ask away. Um, well, I was wondering how, Marie, how are you uh, tracking your, uh, like your, at least the last hour, are you doing multi-tracking? Is it everything just kind of uh, like st the stereo? So the last album that I did was some of the tracks were multi-tracked and I okay. used the 4MS mixer. Um, but obviously with you, the stuff i like to play things straight through so stopping and starting um and multi-tracking in that fashion like grid recording just doesn't work for me so i just recently i got the performance mixer from wmd and then the d subs um so i've been using that i've got the apollo x16 so when i go to create my next album or mix songs for that i'll be able to have multi-tracks of all of the tracks that i've created which makes things a million times easier yeah. because you can actually mix things correctly yeah that's why i was wondering because it sounded i mean i was like because i was listening to it the other day again i was just like this sounds really tight but it still sounds really jammy mm -hmm. so i couldn't tell if it it, it was a, a good happy medium of the two like you were saying that it was so but sometimes it just sounded like some really just awesome one-off jam. So that's why I was like, I just, you know, I had to ask like how you were doing your thing. So yeah, I yeah, guess that makes sense. <laughs> um, what are the D subs that you just said that you had the thing you mentioned before the Apollo? Um, so the D subs are actually WMD is great. And I feel bad because I don't have any of their like sound making modules. They just have their utility modules. So, uh, the performance mixer, um, I'm sure that you're familiar with that, but they have something where you can get an extra module that connects to the back of the performance mixer. Mm -hmm. um, you can have 16 tracks to record um, with the D-sub connections. And I mean, you don't have to have D-sub to D-sub. Okay, that's pretty cool. I didn't know it, it had like an expander port for that. That's pretty mm -hmm. nice, okay. Yeah, so that's, they- Wow. <laughs> So they've got the module, which is the mixer, and mm -hmm. they e-sub, and then they actually have another expander that provides two more stereo tracks. So, you know, they just started, and I'm kind of mad about this, but they just re-released their, like, large performance mixer, and it has the d-subs and, you know, the two extra performance uh, stereo tracks, so. so. Yeah, it's already kind of built in, you're saying? Is it? Yeah, it's all one okay. thing. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, yeah, that would, that's my question. So you can hand it off to someone else so I don't hog up time. <laughs> no, but no worries, no worries. Great question there, uh, Sound Unit. So I do see right, that. Uh, Robbie also raced. Thanks, uh, Marie. Dan. Thank you. I'm just going to invite Robbie on stage two. So you will need to uh, accept the invite, uh, Robbie, and you can then uh, join the stage. There you go. How are you, Robbie? Hi, thank you for inviting me up. Uh, it's great. It's great to be here. I have a question for Marie. Um, I, I've listened to some of your music, and um, there's uh, some of it has some of the some of the tracks have a kind of an aggressive kind of edge to some of the tones of some of the instruments, and it all sounds really good in the context of the entire patch. But any one of those sounds could be could be kind of violently aggressive. <laughs> vulgar on its own uh and i'm curious how you go about making those sounds um with when it when it's not a complete patch and you don't have a, a pitch sequence going to it and it's not in the context of the the rest of the patch how, how do you go about deciding what sounds what sounds uh are are good and what sounds aren't oh man um I don't know. I don't think I have like a set criteria for that. I think that I start off with something non-offensive, um, <laughs> which helps. Um, 
So start off with something non-offensive and then add in more aggressive sounds. And I, I, mm, I don't know. I mean, that's a really good question. If I was doing it in the moment, I would be able to tell you. But I don't know. I think if it hurts my ears, I'll get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you listen to the those sounds, you'd probably think they hurt my ears like all the time. I really don't know. That's a good question. And I think that's something I'll have to think about when I play again. Um, it's been cold and snowy here. So I've been playing more toned down, calmer things. Um, but the next time I play something aggressive, I'll definitely think about that because it's a really good question. Like, how do I get rid of sounds that I don't like? Yeah, yeah it's something <laughs> I, I struggle with when I try to make more techno-oriented kind of industrial kind of sounding stuff. Uh, and I think that's why I, I tend to stay away from it. So I've heard you have success with it um, sometimes. So I, I was curious. But uh, thank you for taking my question. Yeah, you're welcome. And I think like sometimes, sometimes I don't like what I'm playing, but I, I just kind of go with it because I'm like, well, maybe, maybe this isn't for me, but maybe it'll be for somebody else. I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to love everything you do. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. Great question, Robbie. Thanks so much. Um, any any follow up questions, uh, either live or in the companion channel? Don't hesitate. Um, I don't think that Marie will bite, so can't can't uh, guarantee anything, of course. But yeah. Yeah, you guys ask hard questions. Okay. So, oh, sound unit has another one. There we go. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've wanted to ask this one, and then I forgot, and then that guy's last thing kind of. Oh, I think we lost you there. Let's wait a few seconds and see uh, if they come back. Yep, indeed. I think that uh, we oh, lost. You did. Oh, there we, there we go. Oh, he's back. He's back. Uh, are you back, sound unit? No, we lost him, unfortunately. Well, oh. then, then we can just. Uh, well, I'm, I'm really happy that our good friend Nico. Uh, has uh, raised his hand as well. So Nico, uh, feel free to jump on uh, on stage. You do need to uh, press accept on the uh, on the invite, by the way. Nico, are you there? <laughs> interesting <laughs> or maybe i do see that um oh now yeah there we go hey nico good to have you hey can you hear me yeah now we can hear you how are you oh, okay nice hi everyone uh nice to be here it's very cool to to hear your whole history mary <laughs> um i was wondering what would be a killer feature in a vco <laughs> in your mind Ooh. Okay, uh -huh. so for me, I have the Atlantis and it's like a super duper VCO because it's got a filter, an envelope, a modulation. Oh, everything is uh, already embedded inside. Yeah, um, I think I think for me, um, something like almost like the noise engineering they have the the ranges so they have switches where you can uh switch it to like a bass sound or a mid-range sound or a higher sound mm. something like that is cool um but i find i really like modules that have gate built in so if it doesn't have an envelope it has like at least like a gate and maybe like attack release or attack decay um mm. built in i think like, that's really important um okay then different waveforms too so having outs for different waveforms and and just being able to kind of use the different waveforms to modulate the module lots of modulation too 
Okay, and merge waveforms together, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that oh, like a wave table. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, um, you've heard it here first, people. <laughs> Nico yeah, has, I... has an idea. <laughs> yeah, actually, this was the only question I had. Yeah, no it was, worries. Uh, it's a great question. Personal. <laughs> Thank I... you very much for, <laughs> for this. Great. Uh, then of course, well, I, I do see that sound unit is back. Uh, sound unit, do you still want to uh, ask your follow-up question before you were uh, dropped off? Yeah, perfect. I'm just gonna get you up on stage again, see if the technology right. gods are a bit uh, <laughs> yeah, more, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, I had to find another set of uh, earbuds. Those other ones are shit, so. Mm. Um, where was I? Oh, the scalpel. Um, how do you like that WMD scalpel? as far as uh, using it as a uh, equalization. I love it. Yeah. Uh, they demoed it for me at KnobCon while I was there. And I mean, I, I was really impressed with it, but you're one of the few people I know that actually has one. So um, yeah, so is, do you end up using it a lot for your tone shaping? If I have a bass and the kick drum, if they're getting kind of muddy, um, I'll use the that, or if I use the toms and kick drum together, then I'll use that. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I really like it. Uh, yeah, and you can get early tones out of it too, if you want to. That's kind of what it seemed like, and like the the way you could store the presets, where you could almost kind of se uh, sequence those weird like EQ spikes or whatever in a way, right? Does it yeah. have like a presets? in that way i've used i've only used it i've never used the presets i feel like all of my patches are different so i'm just i'm just not going to save presets but if yeah. it can cycle through it and i did not know that but if it can cycle through it i definitely want to figure out how to do that because that sounds it would like it would be yeah hit up alex i thought he showed me something like that i was just like fuck that's pretty dope <laughs> you know <laughs> um so it was like one of those aha moments uh at knobcon with that thing um, so, but more to your, like what you mentioned before, when I was off, you were talking to Nico about the VCAs or something with, uh, make sure like you like VCAs with gates or, uh, rudimentary attack and decay. Um, yeah. I would, sus I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I guess I'm a little biased here, but you should look at that meta from Starlink because it has that in it. That's why I like it myself because it has a built-in uh, trigger, so you can it basically has a built-in VCA, so you don't need to send it through a VCA. So, you know, you can you send it, uh, uh, you know, CV generation for the attack and decay, but it's all built into the thing. Yeah, into that's the oscillator, you know, which is really nice. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then you you don't have to clutter up your case with. A lot of utility modules i mean they're definitely necessary but they're really no fun to buy um like vcas are are kind of you know they're necessary but not really fun um hmm. but yeah the the i forgot what i was going to say um <laughs> but yes having having some having some things that are built in like an envelope oh i know what i was gonna say the plats i oh. i started to like plats after i discovered that the level you just put an envelope in there and it just you know evolves how you set the envelope so once i figured that out i really started to like plats more because i could make it more of a you could create more pad sounds with it. Hmm. Um, so I really liked that, that it has not only a gate, but it also has that level feature for an envelope. That's a nice one. I'm gonna steal that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a try as well. <laughs> yeah, you might it might change how it you might, feel it about might, it. yeah, absolutely. Good point, good point. 
Um, so, well, again, uh, sound unit, great question. Uh, any any follow up questions to this from from your side? No, I don't think so. Any any additional questions um, from anyone in the audience or in the companion channel? Um, I see yeah. Wiggle one of them says, "Do you prefer all in one voices to separate modules?" Mm -hmm. Oh. You know what? I don't know. If every single oscillator was all in one, that would be really cool. But I guess it it depends more on the sound of it. Like Chainsaw is very bare bones. It's 4 HP. It has three voices, so you can make chords with it, but it doesn't have a gate, it doesn't have an envelope, it doesn't have a filter. But I still like it a lot. So I think the sound is the most important thing. If I like the sound, um, that's definitely the determining factor for a VCO for me. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Perfect. So we're already over uh, the the hour mark, Marie. So I'm not sure if you if you do have any um, uh, hard stop uh, uh, in mind. Um, but let's uh, let's make sure that we get the uh, the last questions in. Um, Anyone has any questions or any comments? Anyone, um, any feedback? No, I think that everyone was able to um, to ask what they wanted to uh, to ask. Uh, so that, oh, maybe one final thing. That's a good one. Uh, how did you choose your artist name? That's a great oh. one. So it's a nod to like the kind of punk naming of yourself um my middle name is marie and then Anne hedonia is where there's you have an inability to feel pleasure um so that's where that came from and then my husband his artist name is paul Molive, like the soap so it's kind of like the <laughs> you know uh, x-ray specs <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Irene. Um, so yeah, it's just a it's just a nod to that. Oh, I like that, and I didn't even pick up on the anhedonia uh, thing actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Sorry. It's kind of depressing. It is, but still, I I, I like the the play on words that's very that, it's very clever thank you perfect um should ask ask asking everyone that uh regarding the patch cables you mean now wiggle or re regarding the artist name favorite patch cables uh, uh, the patch uh, cables yeah Perf favorite patch cables so kyle from from signal sounds actually asked that yeah Roland patch cables uh, that are kind of um, kind of have that uh, woven kind of ropey exterior. Those are nice. Um, the endorphins patch cables are really nice. Um, I have some longer. There were some patch cables. Oh, Erica Sins patch cables are my least favorite. They seem oh. to be the ones that the quickest. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and again, a, a hot take here on the on the show. <laughs> yeah, I I love Erica since. I mean, that's, I love the stuff that they make. It's just I I notice like some of them don't work, um, mm -hmm. or some of them break. But yeah, I think the endorphins ones are great. I want the patch cables that light up. I haven't gotten any of those yet. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But like. Uh Cool. I've got five of them, but what they 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 have one downside though, is they um they will of course impact the actual signal that you go through the patch through them. So they're great for for things like triggers or 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 even gates. But I haven't even dared to do any sort of um, 
uh, complex CV or uh, or even a volt a volt proactive signal through that because I think that that's going to yeah. be that's going to be a <laughs> that's that'll, that's going to be impacting that as well. Now the yeah, LED, sure. we're talking about the LED ones in detail. Wiggle. Um, let's see if I can. So I. So this is actually my what's it, uh, my my brother-in-law actually got me those um, light up uh, modular cables. He got them from Austria or something. Yeah, the bike. Th th these are the ones. Gear news, LED jack lights. See if we can find them. LED Eurorack patch cables. Yeah, these are the ones. Producer tools. That's it. Yeah, I think that those those are really cool, but I know that they can definitely dampen the signal. Mm -hmm. I would probably decoration, so just plug them into things I'm not using. Yeah. Let me just uh, not do it like that. And as you said, it's um, but it's 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 a great visual gimmick, and I I've, I've used them to make sure that I understand how the actual trigger signals are are flowing, and that was a nice one. Oh, perfect. So um, that being said, well, again, um, Marie, I, I would like to thank you again so much for your time. I uh, I had a blast. I hope uh, you enjoyed yourself as well. Um, yeah. As always, I'd like to thank you. And if you want to have any sort of closing statement or anything, any closing comments, uh, please go ahead. Oh, thank you for coming and listening for this entire hour and asking questions and just being part of the modular community. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Thanks for that, Marie. So um, that being said, I do want to thank everyone again for uh, either joining us live uh, on Discord or if you're listening to the recording uh, of this show afterwards. Thank you so much for your time. This has been a presentation of the Modular Clubhouse, uh, which is a combination of the community on Discord, uh, plus of course the uh, YouTube channel uh, where we go into all things that have to do with, uh, with synthesizers and uh, modular and even more specific Eurorack and um, yeah feel free to uh, to reach out to me directly if you've got any questions any comments any sort of feedback um, that being said I do want to take this opportunity to uh, wish everyone uh, the best for 2022 let's make it a very safe and healthy year for all around and I do hope that everyone is able to join for our next uh, meetings um, so on th on Thursday this week we will have Muffin Zaif joining us uh, on Discord and next week we're gonna have Vaklav from Bastel uh, here too so make sure that you uh, note those down into your uh, little notebook and until then I would just say please everyone stay safe stay healthy and thanks so much for listening take care cheers bye 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 Thank you.